As I mentioned, the U.S. Senate is back in session this week, and at the top of the Democrats' agenda is legislation to codify a redefinition of marriage. The House of Representatives passed similar legislation in July, with even 47 Republicans voting to approve. We're fortunate the August recess arrived before the Senate could hold its vote. Since then, I've heard from viewers and listeners of this program, and I've heard from members of Congress, and they've been hearing from you as you have reached out to them in opposition to this bill. Joining me now to discuss this and more is Senator Kevin Kramer. He serves on five committees, including the Senate Budget Committee. He represents the state of North Dakota. Senator Kramer, welcome back to the program. It's always good to be with you. Thanks, Tony. Well, welcome back to the city. Um, yeah. as, as we heard earlier, a lot of things that are concerning to Americans, inflation, rising crime rates, chaos at the border, but that doesn't seem to be at the top of the Democrats' agenda. Well, it sure isn't. And, I mean, when you consider the speech that President Biden delivered in what looked to me like a Batman set, Batman movie set, um, it, it seems to be uh, all about Donald Trump, which I find absolutely um, amusing in some respects that the that the current president is more, um, you know, sort of motivated by the previous president than he is by the the uh, effects of his own presidency. And I, I, f I find it to be insecure. I find it to be a bit uh, desperate, quite honestly, that he would choose to attack the his predecessor and the people who support his predecessor, um, while not talking about any of the things that people are talking to me about back home in North Dakota, the, the issues that you've raised with inflation and crime, especially. Senator, I don't know, is it just me, but even today <laughs> when Senator Schumer went to the floor talking about yeah. pre President Trump calling people names, being ugly, yeah. and you just heard the clip from President Biden accusing half of America of being right. MAGA Republicans and being against the Constitution, against the rule of law. To me, it sounds an awful lot like the Democrats are trying to cover their trails uh, and they're projecting onto Republicans what they've been doing for the last dozen years. Well, it's hard not, you know, it's hard to, to miss the irony in it, isn't it? I mean, Joe Biden talking about Republicans as though we're not for the rule of law when he's the guy, he's the head of the party that has been all about um, defunding the police, encouraging riots in the streets. I mean, Chuck Schumer himself encouraging, you know, at least threatening Supreme Court justices by name with with physical harm. Uh, really quite ironic. But he, what I see in all of this, I, I mentioned a little bit ago, a sense of desperation as well as insecurity. I think the Democrats are feeling very desperate because their own base is not reliable right now. Their own base is dis satisfied. And it seems to me that their rhetoric is trying to shore up their own base, never mind, you know, the independent voters, the, you know, the, the, the middle ground voters, if you will, um, that are looking for real solutions, substantive solutions. Uh, Senator Kramer, let's talk a little bit about what is at the top of their agenda. One of yeah. those is what they call the Respect for Marriage Act, a, a very poorly named, it should be named the Disrespect for Marriage Act. This will only accelerate, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the threats to religious freedom in this country. What are you hearing about this bill? What are you hearing from your colleagues? What are the prospects? Well, I think, first of all, what I'm hearing from North Dakotans, which matters the most to me, is overwhelmingly they, they oppose this legislation. So people are reading it, they're hearing about it, and they see it for what it is. Um, what I hear from my colleagues, there's certainly a, a few, and you know, we know generally who they are by co my colleagues, I mean, Republican colleagues, is who just want to get this thing behind us. And the, and the fastest, faster we can do that, the better. And the best way to do that is to simply give them the votes they need to pass the bill. That would be a terrible mistake. I don't believe there are 10 Republicans that will fall for that. Um, because what we're hearing from people, and you touched on it, in, in addition to or maybe even separate from the definition of marriage itself and how it's codified, is the potential attack on religious liberties once a bill like this would pass. Because in many respects, passing a bill like this really sends a pretty strong message that, that religious beliefs don't matter. And, and th this would have such overwhelming ramifications for for obviously churches, but also those faith-based organizations that, that create schools and build hospitals and orphanages and feed hungry people and all of the things that faith and the compassion that comes from faith 
do on behalf of, of our society. And they do it in a way that's compassionate, unlike the federal government. And I think, Tony, this is as much about religious liberty as it is about marriage and, and recognizing another state's definition of marriage. Uh, Senator, I, I, I think you're absolutely correct. You know, because we've seen in the seven years since the court redefined marriage, we've seen this acceleration of hostility, oftentimes at the hands of government. We're going to be talking in our next se segment with an ADF attorney who represented an adoption agency, a faith-based adoption agency mm -hmm. that receives no government money, but was being, they were trying, they were being targeted by the state of New York simply because they wanted to place children with married couples, married men and and, and women, moms and dads, and that was because of their faith. Is that message about this threat to religious freedom getting through to your colleagues? So, Tony, I think it is getting through, and, and you teed it up very nicely when you said, fortunately, the August recess came along in time for us to go home and hear from our constituents, hear from our priests and our pastors and the praying men and women of our churches, the people that start these types of ministries that are so compassionate and provide a service that's so important. And by the way, remember, if you didn't have faith-based organizations doing all of these things, the, the alternative is the government. And, and that's really what liberals want. They want the government to replace the church, to replace the body of Christ, to, to replace um, you know, you know, compassionate faith-based services. And I don't want that. Really, in many respects, Tony, you know, and I don't like to be too hard on the church, but but I think for a long time we took our eye off the ball. We even sort of liked the idea that the government would feed hungry people, that they would clothe the poor, that they would visit the sick. And I always like to tell my colleagues that the Sermon on the Mount wasn't delivered to the democracy or to the Congress. It was delivered to the disciples and the church and the congregation. And I just, I don't want us to lose neither that responsibility or that obligation as faithful people. We have to, we have to fight back on this. Well said. And in fact, we're going to talk about that more, why the church is kind of, I think, drifting from that understanding of that responsibility. Senator Kramer, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. And welcome back to always, town. Always my pleasure. Thank you, Tony.